All right, so I think I'm going to change up a little bit. Last, I did a couple of videos where I was describing how poorly the modern space station is put together and all the um, <clears throat> impossible technology and, um, you know, just making fun of them. And, you know, we really got to back up because they've been doing it for so long. Let's go back um, to the early 60s and, and, you know, they've actually come a long way from what they were doing back then. So, all right, let me show you a couple of videos that I put together. Let's see here. So this is the first EVA, so that's your uh, um, extravehicular activity or spacewalk, right? So this is the first time back in 1965, um, and he's wearing this impossible spacesuit, and I'll show you that later. Um, <clears throat> just it's got a two foot zipper in it, <laughs> might leak. I don't know. Um, let's see. Check this out. Roger, we just had word from Houston. We're ready to have you get out whenever you're ready. Give us a mark when you egress the spacecraft. Okay, we've got to go now, is that right? Affirmative. Okay. Now you just twiddle around with something for a while, I don't know exactly what it is, but this is <laughs> what they do these days is walk around with a little, you know, hammer or screwdriver up, walking around and they just wiggle it around and don't really do anything. Watch him like, it's, watch Jaredism, he's got yeah, some old stuff, it's hilarious. Right. Just picks it apart, like, just doing literally nothing. Okay, he's going to drift off. Watch how he floats up and down. Comes back down. Bouncing. It's supposed to be in weightlessness. He would be... He would just touch and go in one direction. But he was, he was bouncing, so... There's number one clue. Look at these straps. Around his butt. I'll show you, there's another video of these guys in these high altitude balloons. Um, with these same straps, the same suit, so <laughs> just gotta look, look at him, he's like hanging, like imagine a balloon right here pulling him up, he's literally squatting, that's what he's doing the whole time, looks over, so this guy has a helmet that can twist, they don't do them anymore because they won't hold pressure, but back in 1965 they can do it, <laughs> they, they lost the technology to, to reproduce that type of vacuum seal, so... <laughs> These days they can't do anymore, so go figure. Um, <laughs> right. Look at California first. California, this Houston contact remote your air ground. UH Note air. that it's always all just water. He's like <laughs> going around the whole planet, you see it the whole time, and it's all water. There's no land. <laughs> This goes on for a while, so let's get it going. It's literally the same thing. All water. All water. <laughs> Not sure if that's Earth because the Earth has land on it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's working. Keep talking. Jiminy 4, it's working. Keep talking. It's supposed to be Ed Hunt, I believe. He was the <clears throat> the astronaut. Jiminy 4, keep talking. It's working. Obviously, remember, this is a fake. It's, he's not really out there. <laughs> Jiminy 4, you're some Capcom. Allegedly, that's who this guy's talking to. The, the Capcom is like Houston or whatever, and they've got this guy on the radio waiting for him to respond here. Probably clear, but it's very fun. Jiminy 4, Houston, Capcom. And look, it's all clouds now. All clouds. All clouds. And again, every time they show these, Earth out of the shot like this way or spinning around. Earth is never out of position on the shot. It's like this perfect shot, and the you know 
spacecraft where this guy never turns around. And this other way, you always have to have that magic. I wonder what that's always in the background. Maybe it has something to do with being a doctor. I love this and, game, Mike. Um, and, uh, you know, explaining to people. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Look at all these clouds. It's so goofy. Alright, so let's see. At the very end, this guy's gonna glitch out. And they cut the feed. Because Earth glitches out. And they pretend like they lose the feed. See, all still clouds. Oh, finally clouds again. Okay, watch this. Now watch Earth glitch. See how fake see that? you see that? <laughs> Watch. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. See? So that's, uh... <clears throat> this is some uh, digitalized or something remake of the original, but this was uh, old footage that has been kind of redone um, from 1965. So that was the first uh, alleged time a, a man was up in outer space and got himself away from the from the spaceship, and and uh, that was it. So I'll show you a zipper suit and. I'll show you how silly they are. First of all, real quick, we'll show about the 20th century. He combined his two passions in making a series of daring high altitude flights above 17,000 feet. The aim was to measure high energy particles in the atmosphere. His discovery of cosmic rays landed him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1936. He was also the pilot of the first scientific balloon. Fast forward to the end of World War II and a man named Otto Winzen. He devised a way of sealing thin polyethylene film with load-bearing tape. His helium-filled balloons made it possible to fly very large and heavy payloads. And he got a patent on that in 1950. And those early balloons were so large, they didn't have any way to launch them, except they actually launched them from aircraft carriers. Modern scientific ballooning was born. The first spacesuits and other pioneering technologies designed for the space program were flown and tested on high altitude scientific balloons. With the modern space program now at the forefront, Winzen's balloon became a workhorse for carrying large scientific payloads to the edge of space. These balloon-based experiments began to train generations of young scientists, including one named John Math. All right, so <clears throat> that kind of goes to a little history about uh, what satellites really are too. They're, they're balloons. Um, there's no floating magic satellites like that. They all hang on balloons and that's why we can see them and they're about a 100, 120,000 feet. They're the size of football stadiums and uh, that's why you can see it kind of floating by because it's so big it's kind of barely lit up. <clears throat> um, anywho, so what else we got here? Let me show you. Come on, I've got a photo of this thing. Alright, so there's the back of the Gemini 4 spacesuit. It's a zipper, okay? That is how they climb in and out of it. These are the boots. They're, they're, they say they're uh, combat style military boots and they zipper on here. <laughs> you know, this thing cannot be possibly be airtight. Look how thin it is. This is all stitching. Everything together you know, here is stitching. So there's a million holes through the fabric. This in no what possible way could ever be airtight. And he's supposed to be um, doing the first outer space airwalk in this, in that video you just saw. So, another impossibility. 
Alright, so what else here? Got a couple cool things. Let's see, Gemini. Yeah, look at this suit. This is the next one. Same thing, these uh these are supposed to like zip on. It's a zipper in the back to get into these things. <laughs> it's all hand stitched. And these are what the people leading up to Gemini was before the Apollo missions, which allegedly went to the the moon. This is the, the earlier tests and you know trying to make them orbit and all the nonsense they were doing, but this is the original space program. So these are old school suits, but all the same, all the same, these things were supposed to be airtight back then in outer space. Um, with a with a variance um, of negative 250 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 250 degrees Fahrenheit, which they say during the day and night it fluctuates that much. And this stupid suit is supposed to um, keep them warm and and keep them cold, cool them off when it's 250 degrees outside. I would love to see this guy sit in a room for five minutes in this suit in a room that's 250 degrees and see how he holds up <laughs> see what happens okay so if one thing's impossible the entire space program is impossible because of this one suit and that's a fact if they fake it once they fake it all and we know they fake it all because i mean everything we can pick apart um all has a flaw and it's all so obvious and it's just so goofy anyways so um now let's look at the neil armstrong suit this same thing these were made a few years later so they had some advances right it's all stitching there are several layers on these things to uh let's see see temperature range to protect the suit against negative 250 to positive 230 it's amazing it's amazing, it's just so goofy, right? 25 layers of mylar and all this other stuff to save them, okay? Check this out. This is the suit, this is kind of an x-ray. This is from Smithsonian website. Look at the zipper, that's how they get in. All through here, okay? <laughs> all of this is hand stitched, you can see the stitching. All that stitching is literally puncture holes, okay? This is not, there's no, dude, there's no way this could be designed to be airtight. It has thousands of holes in it. Let's see. Here it is, there's the zipper. They get in there, and it's supposed to have this rubber liner, or this, you know, supposed to smush together <laughs> and that is supposed to keep this inner zipper and the outer zipper as he moves back around and stretches it out. It's this old rubber and it's not like you know, these are like machined perfectly to, to, to specifically bond. <laughs> you know, it's just a crappy old zipper from 1965. Um, so this is Neil Armstrong's suit. This alone proves that the moon landing never happened that's a fact i would love to see this guy put this suit on and go in a real world nat uh, vacuum chamber today and sit in there for five minutes and watch his saliva boil and die <laughs> so so this proves the moon landing if anybody asks keep this Maybe ask them the moon landing, say this is it. Here's the zipper suit. Look, this is Smithsonian. National Air and Space Museum. This is this is them, man. This is their stuff. They are proud of this. Okay? <laughs> Airandspaceside.edu. <laughs> this is an official channel, okay? So this is they're they're putting this out like it was just the way like of course it worked. <laughs> so that's about it. I think I'm going to get out of here, but I uh, just wanted to <laughs> just pick it apart. Um, one last thing to throw in, uh, just because it's hilarious, is 
um, this SpaceX back to the modern real quick. Let's just look at how goofy this is. SpaceX large landing. Okay. <laughs> this proves that Tesla Elon Musk is a fraud. This proves all of SpaceX is a fraud. Anyway. There it is. Can't see it, sorry. It's a little... <clears throat> Just to let you know that's not real. Okay? Just to, get, to, get, to put some context to this. Look at how... Look at how the ocean is so choppy, right? Um, it's a barge. It's a 300 foot long barge. That rocket is 212 feet tall and is 12 feet wide. It's literally a pencil. Trying to land on a barge, a 300 foot barge, coming down out of the sky from um, like 10,000 miles an hour <laughs> with no guidance system and and perfectly lands. So um, again, that proves Elon Musk is a fraud and a liar. The SpaceX is a fraud and they are liars. I mean, one of these things, just one rational um, idea here that, that you can show somebody and say, this is <laughs> this is it. I mean, you can't you can't get past that. I just showed 10, 10 easy kills of the entire thing. So. Anyways, uh, take it easy. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up and go to bed.